We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we're going to the press to see what we can lift off the press. Uh, what is it that made it to the front pages of our national dailies? Today, we're going to take just three national dailies. Um, that is The Punch, The Guardian, and The Nation newspaper. Um, almost all of them have the same uh, headlines, or all of them have almost the same headlines. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. And I'm glad to uh, announce to you that this morning we have... Uh, standing by to help us make sense of the topics or the headlines. Architect Ezekiel Nyai took a public affairs analyst uh, talking to us from Akwaibom. Good morning and welcome to the show, Architect Nyai Tok. <laughs> I'm eating my Good words. Good morning, sir, mm. and always a pleasure to be on your program. Yeah. Okay, we have interesting headlines this morning, and we're going to begin with the Punch newspaper and see what is on the Punch newspapers. Uh, first of all, the leading headlines, or the biggest headlines, or the boldest headline there, is Tinubu pleads for more time as NLC issues strike notice. And the writers on that uh, uh, story are Presidency meets NLC TUC over palliative delay, Labour insist on Wednesday protests. And then resident doctor strike grounds hospitals, federal government may enforce court order against labor. Now, this is a very worrisome story. NLC strike is spoiling for a fight. Uh, NAD has already gone on strike and all that. And then the presidency is asking for more time, saying that the president is very new in office and some of these things the presidency is claiming they were not briefed, so they need to look at what is on the table before they can issue a statement or know, or know how to tackle these affairs. Let me hear your take on what is happening. I, I, I think it's very depressing and almost demoralizing. And I would like us to know the story behind the story. Mm. I am a Nigerian. And issues of Akwaibom State are very important to me because I wanted to be the governor of Akwaibom. Mm. Extrapolate that and take it to the center. President Tinubu is not somebody that was, that something was foisted on him. Like in some cases, you see a predecessor leaving office and he just handpicks somebody and puts the person there. This is a man who says his lifelong ambition was to be the president of Nigeria. And he can't be somebody who is talking from a, a point of naivety because he's been a two-time governor of Lagos State. So he understands the functions of a chief executive. Now, fast forward that to where we are today. The issues on the table are not new at all. There are issues that I, not looking at Nigeria and as my constituency, am familiar with. Not to talk of somebody who wanted to be a president who must have been looking at Nigeria as his constituency, who must have been looking at the problems of Nigeria, who have, must have been, you know, having sleepless nights and wondering why are they going left when they should go right, why are they doing it this way when it could have been done, better done the other way? He should have been very familiar with our challenges and the solutions to our challenges. And you cannot talk of management of Nigeria without the organized labor because that's your workshop as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the issue of the civil service, the issue of the civil servants, the issue of NLC must be an issue that is right there at the, at the tip of your fingers. Now I'm asking you, what do you need more time for? Before you started nursing an ambition to be a president, you must have familiarized yourself with certain things about government, but you wouldn't know the details. Certain details you wouldn't know. As at today, I have an idea of a minimum of 60% of the goings on in Akwaibom State. Because 
I have friends in government. I, I interact with them. So I believe that he must have been having that. Then fast forward, I will always say, for four months, four months, he has been elected as president. Elected not against an opposing government, but on his own government, meaning that from day one, you are already seen as Mr. President. There's no antagonism. You have access. You could have questions. After four months, if you do not understand the issues on the table, then I feel sorry for us going forward. Let, let, me, just, let me just understand this, uh, Mr. Yes. Inacto. Because if I am thinking from a point of view of a layman, I'll be thinking about handover notes. I'll be thinking yeah. about the transition committee that is being set. What are the provisions inside the, the notes of a transition committee that a person who has been elected will still claim ignorance of happenings in the previous government, be it a, the same party or not? What are those things that are supposed to be in this document no. of the handover? I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The transition notes if you know what you want, should be tailored to answer the questions you would have written down before today. Mm. So if you are from an opposing camp, they may not be in a hurry. Actually, those things you want are the things they would like to hide or bury. Mm. But when you have the benefit of this being your own party, they will know the things you want they will know the things that are important, the imperatives. So they will not only give you what you want, they will even tell you, sir, this one and this one. I always tell you, if you want to be a successful governor, have the civil servants as your friends. Because they will tell you, even as a minister, if you get into any ministry, don't go and try to lord over the civil servant. You will fail. There's what they call management of the boss, managing the boss. They will get you so occupied. They will take, get you so busy. But you will not know that these guys are just leading you in the direction that they want. It is when you leave office that you sit back and ask yourself, what did I really achieve? But I was busy all along. They were managing you, man. So come back to where we are. That excuse of I need more time is untenable, is unacceptable. It means that there's really no plan on ground. Okay? Four months after you've been elected, Two months after you've been sworn in, because you can say, well, when I'm elected, maybe, maybe there are certain things that they are still trying to put together or cover or something. But by the time you come in and you are elected president, first 30 days, I can understand because it is into. Now, look, let me tell you, guy. While I was campaigning, I knew who would be my secretary to government. I knew. I knew whom I would be have as the commissioners of four key ministries. And there's nothing in the Federal Republic of Nigeria's constitution that says you must send all the lists in at a time. I would have known who would be my minister of finance. Then with this issue of labor, 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 I would have known who would be my minister of labor and productivity because these things have been festering. I would have known who would be my, you know, my key, when you look at your key drivers, your agenda, I would have known maybe at least five key mini ministers. You send them in, you get them cleared, they come in. Who is Labour talking with as of today? Special advisor. Mm. Who is my attorney general and the minister of justice? These are issues that relate to interagency, the law court, and all those things, because there are many very serious legal issues, you know, going on. And you have no minister of, uh, the, what do you call it, attorney general, a minister of uh, justice. No, you would have known them. You would have sent them in. They would be there with you working. That's how you hit the ground running. But when you come and you are waiting for the last day, which means if that law was not there, guy would just be hitting for another six months without ministers. So I, I think that Nigerians should really wake up and stop just expecting that the man that they employed is their boss. I mean, think about what I've just said. 
the man that you employed is your boss. It's it, 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 it's an error. Okay. Well, just, just talk... is... now, now that you just mentioned the fact that if there were no laws, uh, maybe we would have waited another six months. It gives us worry as well because, okay, let's go to the Guardian newspaper right now. The, the boldest headline there is Tinubu Toast Familiar Path as ministers may not resume till September. On the punch, it was that, okay, we're going to have the ministerial list today. The list will be out today. Some people are even saying the list is not complete. And before now, we've seen very many lists that are, that are flooding the internet. Everywhere you go to, there is a ministerial list somewhere, and you find another one somewhere else. Some names are missing, some are added, and all that. We've not seen the one with a presidential seal yet. We're expecting it today. But people are also speculating that it is possible these ministers will not even be in office till September. That is so many months after the uh, election and after the inauguration. So what do you think about that? Is he taking time uh, to do the right thing or his taking time is unacceptable? The taking time is unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. That's number one. Number two, he is expected to send the list to the National Assembly, to the best of my knowledge, within 60 days. He pushes it to the closing date where the National Assembly is about to go on their vacation. So he gets clever by half by sending in the list on the last day. Now, the National Assembly can say, well, sorry, it's not our fault. We already have our timelines and our progresses put in place. As a result, yes, we have gotten the list, but we need to do a lot of background checks. We need to do a lot of, um, you know, getting into profiling and everything. This is going to take time. And um, since we are going on vacation, we will now keep it till we come back so that we don't rush over it. We want to do a thorough job. You know, all those things now, as a result, they help him go back. And once he has fulfilled that, there is nothing that says that the list you send in, you cannot withdraw. My former governor, Goswila Pabio, used to say the hand that appoints can also disappoint. Okay? <laughs> Which means that you can actually, during this period, continue your tinkering with the list until this will come back because you can withdraw. You are at liberty to withdraw any list that you've sent. But the first thing is that he has fulfilled the, you know, the constitutional uh, re uh, obligation. And then we now may not have ministers till September, like was said. And it would be, be unfortunate. But I think that he should be in a hurry right now because Nigerians are losing. If I don't want to be uncharitable to say Nigerians have lost patience. You know, that, 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 that zest, that zeal, that... Uh, I, I, and and uh, well, expectation, expectation that we had that, you know, he's going to be a technocrat. He's gotten to discover that politics has come to play a game on him. So that thing he did in Lagos that we used to use on the campaign, you know, he will bring this and that. I think by the time we have seen the, 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 the list that is being, um, you know, uh, sent out, you know, not, not sent out. Uh, it's being speculated, that's the word. I don't think that there is that excitement. And I think he's coming to the reality of what is going to face him as soon as that list officially hits the road. And um, I think Nigerians are going to express the level of disappointment that will not, will not be nice for him. Okay, but um, would you say what labor and uh, TUC is doing is rather harsh or it's in line? Because they are insisting that uh, uh, on August 2, they will still go on strike if all the demands are not being met by government. Uh, we spoke about this when we're, when we're in the first topic that we addressed, but let's go back to it. Labor is standing on the August 2 strike or protest. Uh, do you think they're being 
too harsh? Or are there other approaches that you, you think that could have been uh, explored rather than going on strike and protesting? I will personally accept that I am stuck between the rock and the hard place. Because two things. Number one, the Bible is very clear that a workman is worthy of his wages. Okay? So labor is at liberty to think in terms of the welfare of the workers. I also agree with labor that what they call wage today is far from what you may call a living wage. Very, very, very far from it. Even in my own state, uh, in desiring to be the governor, one of the things I was to attack, I had to do a lot with um, the, the, the remuneration, what is paid to workers. It's, it's not okay, I would say that, without even thinking twice or batting an eyelid. That's number one. Number two is that labor has to come to terms with the fact that Nigeria is a country of labor that forms a very a small part, let me not use the word insignificant part, of the population. And the removal of, of 12 subsidies is what affects the generality of Nigerians. They affect the staff of government as well as they affect the staff in my employ. And they all go to the same market. So when labor now comes and says, give us 200,000 as minimum wage, what labor is effectively saying is that take the lion's share of what would come from it and give it to my own little people. And I think that's being inconsiderate. While it is the place of labor to negotiate for their members, they must realize that they must be fair on it. Because each time they talk in terms of we're going on strike, they should realize that it is going to affect the generality of Nigeria. So the question is, how can we build a win-win platform where the 30,000 Naira minimum wage has not been paid this will have not shown that they have the capacity to pay. Labor should engage Nigerians in certain calculations. I've said this time and time again. We have an envelope that contains 100 let, oranges. Let, let me just, let me ask, because of a statement you made, that uh, government has not uh, shown that they have capacity, as, at, at least some states, that they have any capacity to pay 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Is capacity really the word or the willpower to pay this thirty thousand? Capacity. I will say this: capacity, not willpower. You know, I, I talk with some level of confidence because I entered the governorship race on a very cerebral note, on a very clear note, and that's the next thing I wanted to say. I have one hundred oranges to share amongst 20 people that have equal rights to the oranges. And you are asking me to give you five. No, 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 not five. Because 120 should be five, five, five. You are asking me to give you 30. Yeah, that's a better, you know, illustration. We have 100 oranges. We have 20 people. And one person wants... 30 oranges. Why do I give this analogy? It's a very simple thing. There's a budgeting process. In that budget, there is a fixed sum that we have. Then we now have two aspects of the budget. One is the recurrent. The other one is the, um, the, the capital and the recurrent. In that recurrent, you have um, the running of government and you have salaries and wages. It means that there are certain statutory works you have to do, capital on one hand, before you come to recurrent, and in the current, you have running of government, you have salaries and wages. So that box is there. Now, running of government, salaries and wages affect more of the government, you know, the government and, the, and, and its workers, okay? The government and its workers is what you have at that recurrent which is running of government and salaries and wages. Now, what affects the common man is the aspect of the capital. 
And of course, repayment of loans is also a subset of that, and we are owing so much. When you come to do the calculation of 200,000 as minimum wage, you extrapolate that, you now are going to be asking for a minimum of about 30% of the wages to be given to that segment. Now, what are you going to have as running of government? And what are you going to have as, you know, the capital that will now benefit the generality of Nigerians? It's, it's a discussion that we should have. And let my, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Nigerians just think you just pick and choose. Oh, they don't have willpower. They don't have capacity. Because well, if um, they are to do that, they are going to have to borrow so much yeah, well, to be well, able to meet. Sometimes, okay, maybe... Um maybe some of these leaders need to have orientation before they go into office or just before, oh, yes. just after they are oh, elected. Yes. Because we see, oh, yes. we see a government that is struggling to have, some, have a good welfare for the people of the state. Building, for instance, um, pedestrian walkways in villages that do not have up to 10 cars entering the village in a day. And there was absolutely no need for that. And they're doing it because they just want to point at something and say, this is a legacy project. Maybe we should start to talk about that as well. Let them have orientation to see the priority of the people because there is no much engagement with the people they are governing. Because if you come to my okay. village to ask me, it may not be a road that I want. It may be something else, but they don't ask this. That is a critical thing that is out of our government. How can we bring it back? Let me tell you something. Two things. Madam Obi Ezekwesili and other Nigerians, she set up the SPPG, School of Politics, Policies, and Governance. INEC should network with such institutions and ensure that before you buy a form, to contest at whatever level. You have spent two weeks in these institutions that should be enhanced by government to be right down to every local government. They can bring them up to the state level, okay? Before you buy a form, you go to buy a form with the presentation of that certificate that you have been told and you have an understanding of what this is all about. In the average of a man who is going to vie for election, his own is, oh boy, make I go change my life. Oh boy, make I go chop my own. So to them, as far as they are concerned, state capture is the motivation. You no, know, I've always said that service must be the motivation and the essence for seeking public office. But no, each time I say that, this will look at me and say, yeah, I told you, you've come again with this, your grammar. But that is the real thing. These people, for them, it's, it's, it's enterprise. For them, it's state capture. For them is to enhance their lives. For them, they pay you during election and they are through with you. They don't owe you nothing more. Then they go and have four years of enjoying. And Nigerians need to come to terms with this reality that they do it. Because you, you want to contest election. They're not asking who you are. And it's like, how much do you have? When you tell them, maybe 60 million, they say, ah, no, go for a Senate or House of Reps. Do you understand me? If you tell them you have, um, you know, in a quiet bomb, can say, I can, you can bring out the 100 million. They will tell you, bros, go for Senate. If you say, how about the 50 billion? Even if you are a Senate material, I say, ah, no, you can't go for Senate. Go governorship. Abba, go governorship. And, you know, it, it, it's sad that the people that move you into each class are the people that think of what they will be able to get and extract during the process because all Nigerians get is the little they get during election. That is why vote buying will continue to be one of our biggest problems until we're able to educate Nigerians adequately. Now move to step two, which is by the time you enlighten people, INEC has to, do you know, oh boy, maybe, we, maybe <laughs> we leave, if I enter that other side, we won't leave here well, today. <laughs> now, the, the, the problem is, uh, we'll enter into other issues, but you, when you talk about enlightenment, um, most times it is about the people, the ordinary person that uh, is assumed not to know much about the political happenings around them, the ordinary masses. And you assume that some people are 
politically aware, so much so that they should know what to do. But these are the critical people, the critical few that influence the majority. Now, if you go and educate these people and the, the, the minority that is critical is not made to feel the sense of patriotism, will it even work? It will work. You see, Nigeria operates on a concept of what I call elitism. In our place, my village is waiting to hear what I'm saying. And if I abdicate that responsibility, one small local man in the village is going to give direction. People follow direction. That is why certain parties just seem to sweep and go. They don't have that independent mind to act access. Now, in my village, and probably in your village, the responsibilities, the duties are on you. You pay the bills. You check your phone on a daily basis. What you see is request, 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 request. request. You keep paying, 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 paying. But during election, rather stand up and say, my village, you know, I've been paying you. You've got to do the right thing. This is where we should go. You leave it. No, I don't want to allow. Then one little man in the village, there, the local champion, takes the decision, put what is in his own interest, and then you start a new round of having the problems because when you carry square pegs and put it in round holes, you don't need to be told that it will not fit. The only way it will fit is where that round hole is bigger than the square peg. So you just drop the square peg and the square peg is, you know, dangling and everything. So it's a mismatch and a misfit. The only way that we will wake up and have Nigeria of our dreams is when we, the elite, know that that time has come. And to a great extent, it started in this last dispensation with that, what you call the obedient movement. Unfortunately, we have overpersonalized it to the person of Mr. Obi. No, he was a beneficiary of, 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 of an ideology. That ideology is that we want somebody that is not tainted. We want somebody that is going to come in and do the work. We want That was the ideology. And it just happens to fit into that movement. And I think that Nigerians should wake up and take the obedient movement beyond the person and have it as a concept and as ideology going forward where people were willing to sacrifice, where people were willing to think outside the box, where people were willing to come into the fray. People who had never, ever taken part in politics were willing to come. Let us not close that box and say, oh, it is part Peter will be, oh, it is Southeast. Let the Northerners also coin another name, but with the same ideology, and find a man that typifies a Nigeria of our dreams where people are going to come out do the work, sacrifice. Peter Obi had a lot of things going for him when he was governor. When he said, look, this is state money. I cannot waste state money. I've got to make sure that I return value for money on the investment of the people called government. There are people in the North that have also lived such a life. Let the Northerners rally around such people. There are people in the Southwest. Now, why is Southwest rallying behind uh, Mr. Tinubu? Is it because... He typified their yearnings, expectations, or because he has financial capacity. If it is on account of financial capacity, then what a shame it is. But if it is that this man is a man that showed us that you can have excellence, you can have technocrats, and they walk around him because of them, as a then, now that he's come back to office, if he no longer possesses that, then leave him and look for somebody in the Southwest. There are multiples of them and rally around them because Nigeria is not ending today. But if he is showing that, yes, the Jacoban of those days, the Tinubu of those days, the no-nonsense president and uh, governor of those days is the same man today, then continue. Let it not be about person. Let it be about concept, about ideology. Mm -hmm. And then we start to have boxes that will come together on the long run and form a coalition of people that mean well for Nigerians, that understand government and governance, and will know that it's not about state capture, but about the essence of government as captured in chapter two, section 14, subsection 2B of our constitution that says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. I rest my case. Okay. Um, 
it's, it's, it's one thing to, for something to be written. It's another thing for it to be understood. Take a case yeah. in point. Uh, it's still on the Guardian newspaper. A case in point that has been highlighted here, something that happened a few days ago, where uh, the prison officials were fighting or the DSS was fighting with prison officials. So now DSS is saying that they are going to investigate uh, what really happened, the people that yeah, went there yeah. to fight. It is not representative of the DSS. Who sent them? Who gave the instructions? NBA, uh, Monde Obani, Falano, others have knocked DSS over the act that they called disgraceful. And a lot of Nigerians are seeing that. Why is it that instead of collaborating, especially the security agencies, collaborating to do what is right. Now there's hoarding of information, there is power tussle, there is these and that, things that are making the outside of, of, or, or other countries to mock Nigeria. I saw videos of Cameroonians mocking Nigeria, Ghanaians mocking Nigeria, uh, some newspapers in the UK and America mocking Nigerians. Why does it always happen this way? It's, you know, there are two things. The first thing is that, look, slap me, waka pass. But don't insult me on top by telling me that you didn't see my face. You looked at me, you slapped me, you walked away. Then you turn around and say, I'm investigating why do you understand me? You, uh, you, you just just slap me, Wakapas. How can DSS say they they want to investigate? Please, for goodness sake, what are you investigating? You are investigating that a number of your operatives were there when every Nigerian saw. You are investigating that. They dragged somebody. You are investigating that the judge made a statement and that, that this should be the case and that they say this is an order from above. Do you need more than one hour to call the guy and say, guy, I'm heard, I'm told that there was this issue of order from above. Who is that order from above? Who said it? Who sent you? And he tells you. And then you now make a public statement within the hour or two because you know that this has become a national embarrassment you 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 are you it's unacceptable except you are complicit mm. except you are an accomplice except you are part of it except you are implicated in it and if it is and you care about this country even if you don't care about this country and the president cares about the country the least that can do is to put all those people out of the way and the box stops on when they say I am directed, you see, there was there was a commissioner that gave me a note. There was something I was doing for a certain governor, and a commissioner sent me a letter. I am directed to effectively disengage. So I went to the governor. I said, This letter I've gotten. He said, I'm directed a commissioner. So you must have directed. He said, No. I said, when they said I am directed, it has to be you. To clear himself, he had to put a call to the commissioner on, 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 on speaker phone. Akiten Yaitok has just brought a letter here and you wrote, I am directed. Who directed you? And he said, say, he said, come over immediately. He sat there and they had to write that an apology letter almost and then rescind that letter. What am I saying? When your staff says, I am directed, it's got to be by his superior. And that superior gets up to the, the, the DG of, of DSS. Mm. Or it was Mr. President. It's either Mr. President of the DG or the DG DSS. Those are the two steps that the buck must get to that level. And if the DG DSS has not taken the bullet, then the next step is the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I'm surprised that it's lingered this long. It's either he's unaware of what's going on, or he couldn't be bothered about what is going on, or he is complicit. But I want to believe better things of Mr. President that is not mm. aware of this because okay. it's too small for him to be. <laughs> so what should he do? Let him show the world the red of his eyes that mm. you cannot embarrass the government. And if you cannot work together, two of you leave. Okay, uh, well, uh, there should no details. Nothing should be too small for them to know. We, we've had enough of I didn't know. 
I didn't know in the previous government. This one must not be that way. But uh, we're wrapping up now, if you can, in a very uh, as short as possible. Just tell us what your take is on what is happening in Niger. The soldiers have declared that they have taken over power as at this moment. Uh, what is it that you have to say or what is happening there? Two things. Number one, I keep saying two things. I don't know why they are not doing three things this time. Two things. Number one is an, it's an indictment on um, on our president. You know, there was a time um, some years back when President Obasanjo was in power. Uh, there was a small country. I think it was um, uh, uh, the, the Principe. What's, what's the name of that country? Uh, that small island and, and Principe. Okay. Mm. They decided to stage a coup like that. And then President Obasanjo just put a call across to them and said, Stop that. Revert. And they accepted. Now, come down to Niger. Our president has just become the president-elect of ECOWAS. Of Before now, Niger used to be the junior brother of our former president. And just as he steps out, these guys have struck. And I think that for our president's reputation, he should bend over backwards and do everything to restore peace and democracy in that country. That will show him as being on top of the situation and he will earn the respect of the international community. And he will send a signal bold to Nigeria that don't even think about it. That's number one. Number two, I think that when things are going south in a country, the leadership should know that a time comes when they may not be able to take it. Things are going south in Nigeria real hard, real bad. I want to pray to all Nigerians to join hands together and help to put things back so that nobody will as much as entertain the thought of truncating this democracy that we've had. And it will be better when the government sits up understands the essence of government, works for the people, and shows the people that they really care about the welfare of the people. We don't care if we don't have. All we know that, all we care is that the man, the, 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 our, our government is doing the very best they can. I will say this as my last word. The best of any law can be made useless by the people. If they don't believe in it mm. while the worst of any law can be made to work by the people if they believe in it let our leaders know that the future belongs to the thoughts of the people let them measure the temperature of the people today and do the needful for sake of posterity mm. At the end of the day, it's about the people. That's why it's democracy anyway. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. It's always a pleasure having you join us, uh, architect Ezekiel Nyaitok. Uh, we Thank are so you. delighted that you could give us part of your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. Okay, that was architect Ezekiel Nyaitok, a public affairs analyst, uh, talking with us from Aquaibom on Off the Press. We'll take a short break, look at the weather, and return to our first big topic. Stay with us. <music>